I found some and I yes. couldn't find some. Um, uh, first, um, you said there was a management service contract earlier than the one I referred to, which is 2016. Did you find the earlier management service contract? No, ma'am. I couldn't find that. Could you confirm, uh, for the record, what was the earliest date that a management service contract was signed according to you? Sorry? What was the service contract? What was the earliest date? I referred to a service contract dated 1st June 2016, and you said there was an earlier one. Now you're saying you can't find it. Oh, but no, sorry, according I'm... to you, what was the earliest date? Earlier no. service contract. No, I didn't get you correctly, but let me let me check. I'll I show you one. exhibit SC56. You show I have me. That one here. This is the service contract between MGI and Gamtel. Yes. Yes. Dated 1st June 2016. Sorry, I, I have it. I think I didn't get you correctly. You have an earlier one. Oh, I thought you were referring to the service contract on Gamsel. Okay. You thought I was referring to which one? No, you know, we had some service contracts associated to the master service agreement. I thought you were referring to that. You have a master service agreement? With, um, with Gamsel, yes. With? The one that was signed for Gamsel. I have it. There is a master service agreement signed for Gamsel? Yes, with regards to the billing platform. Okay, uh, okay we'll come to that. I yes. was referring you to this service, uh, service contract that you signed with MGI under which they were to provide services. Did you sign that agreement? Yes, I signed this agreement. What is the purpose of this agreement? Sorry, Councillor, what's the number of the exhibit? The it's group? part of exhibit SC56. It's part of the bundle, exhibit SC56. Okay, the, the, this, this is the one that was um, cancelled and replaced by the one for the 2014, June. This is a service agreement, it's not a management agreement. The management agreement that is referred to and as cancelled in, in Exhibit SC, again 56, management agreement between MGI and the Gambia government is dated 2nd May 2014. This is an agreement dated 1st June 2016 that we are looking at, two years almost after the management agreement with MGI came into effect. Here it's saying in the recital that MGI has agreed to provide management services in accordance with this service contract and plus one to the IGW management agreement, which is the International Gateway Management Agreement. And it says that um, MGI in clause 4.2 would be paid a monthly management fee of $50,000. And if you look at clause 3.1, clause 
It says um, the service provider shall provide the following service to the service recipient. They are the service provider. And GAMTEL is um, defined as, as the service recipient. And um, it lists out uh, Dell Power Edge, um, IEW soft switches, teleco bridges, carrier BSA solution. So, so I can't recall, actually. I, I think I need time to look at this. Because the... You can't recall, sorry, what? I said I can't recall the contents of this in terms of the service we are referring to. And I have seen um, connected papers where I have a signature attached to the back. Whose signature is this? Isn't it your signature? This is my signature, ma'am. I wish I could see the original of this document because I have seen this document is endorsed on every page. If you look at the initial, I believe that's your initial. Yes, ma'am. Was MGI being paid fifty thousand um, dollars every month? deducted from the gateway management fees or deducted from the um, revenue from the, from the international gateway, actually. Because Clause 4.3 says, without prejudice to its rights and, and remedies, MGI may set off and deduct from the sums due to the government of the Gambia as for the management agreement between MGI and Telecom and the government of the Gambia, effective as of 1st June 2014. In, in other words, you are agreeing to them deducting this management fee of $50,000 monthly. Yeah, um, now I can recall. I think this is related also to all the other service contracts um, with regards to Gamtel that were signed with MGI. And which, which one of them is this one? This is with regards to the management of the, um, the soft switches, the telco bridges, and then the BSA solution, and so on, as listed here. But, but um, uh, let me just, I, I'm not an expert in this area, uh -huh. but I just wish to understand. You signed a management agreement, which is precisely to manage some of these activities that I see outlined here. And this was signed since, um, as I say, the, uh, the, the main agreement signed on the 1st of June 2014, mm -hmm. and under which they were to provide management services of the gateway. And then you, in 2016, you signed another agreement under which um, you seem to, which seems to be covering certain elements of what one would assume that the management contract of 2014 is all about. Yeah, I understand. But, you know, I think this is related to the technical support that they are providing surrounding all these equipments. Just like the same thing they are doing for GAMSEL. I, I, I still am trying to understand. So what were they managing? According to the management agreement, they were the international gateway managers. And um, if you look at the scope of the agreement, SC56, that's the um, agreement dated 1st June 2014, the main agreement. Yeah, let, let me take you that. Um, I, let me give you this copy. Can you give him this copy, please? Okay, ma'am. 
you look at 3.1, it basically says um, the government engages the, their services as the sole exclusive manager of the entire international gateway. Um, this gateway exclusively handles all incoming international traffic terminating in all networks and, and so forth. And um, the MPI shall provide full support for the running, the operation, and full unencumbered management of the international gateway. Yes, I agree. Yes. Now, they installed the switches that were required, which were paid for from the revenue from the gateway in any event. And then in 2016, you signed another service contract for them to be paid $50,000 for doing what they were already supposed to be doing. Allow me to go through this document now. Uh, certainly, we'll take it back from you. You can ask for a copy from the Secretariat. Um, we will give you a copy to take away with you if you wish. Okay. And if you do have an explanation for the Commission, okay. we would like to hear it. Could you collect the exhibit, please? Yes, um, I would like now, to have a copy and then have a look at uh, it. Yes, probably. I have just said you can have a copy from the Secretariat. Thank you. Um, in relation to the management agreement um, dated the 1st of June 2014, yesterday you kind of described how you came to be, how you came to sign it, and I asked you to produce your passport for the period. Do you have your passport today? Yeah, I was looking for the passport, but I could not find it. It's been a long time I did travel, so but I'm still looking for it. What do you mean it's been a long time you didn't travel? You just left government last year, didn't you? Yes, I What did. month did you leave government? Um, Sorry, not government, Gamtel, last year. March. What month did you leave? March. Your services were terminated in March. In March, yes. yes. That's barely, 2017. It's not even one year yet. In March 2017, but I think my latest travel could be in 2016. You'll be re you're required to provide that passport. Yes, I will. Right. I will, I will check. Um, uh, let me just also, um, before I move on to the next document. No, sorry, let me, let's move on to documents you're supposed to provide. There was, you said there was a letter that you wrote recommending um, the engagement of the services of MGI uh, to cover the transition uh, from TEL to M from TEL to a new operator, and government approved that you could, you could retain their services when you took over from TEL. That was before you said you were arrested. Yes, 2013. Do you, do you have the documents? No, I, I could not find that one. That is the 2013 um, uh, takeover. Yes. yes. You wrote recommending that, uh, you wrote um, informing the government that TELS contract had expired. And you received a letter in turn, which was exhibited yesterday, I'll just refresh your memories, as exhibit um, SC72C, mm -hmm. whereby you were written to on the 26th August and um, asked to, that TELS should be summoned to hand over to you. You said, you then wrote to the, um, your partners, asking them to redirect their traffic to TEL in Switzerland through, sorry, MGI in Switzerland. And you said you had permission from the Office of the President to do this. And you had letters, just to refresh your memory. Yeah. Do you have those letters? This is a letter with regards to a takeover plan, which was written to the Secretary General in 2014. I have that. 2014? Yes. Um, no, sir. I'm talking about 2013, before your arrest. I'll yeah. just show you the documents again um, to refresh your memory. Uh, um, okay. Yesterday's
I'm showing you the, the letters that you wrote to the operators dated 8 September 2013 and 9 September 2013. On the 8th, you told them to reroute the traffic through MGI in Switzerland. On the 9th, you told them that the decision to um, terminate TELS contract had been rescinded. And you said you had authority to engage the services of MGI during the transition from TEL to a new operator. And you had letters to that effect. Yes, I had several correspondences. I can still testify that. That was sent to the Secretary General. Then it was Mr. Sabali who was the Secretary General. I can remember very well. And yes, you are asked to produce them. Yeah, but uh, unfortunately, I'm still looking because I don't have them at, with me at home. And the only thing I can do is to see if they will be available to me from the office. I made a request here. Um, I was asked to provide some documents pertaining the National Assembly. And I have still since then been looking for them with the, the, the managing director, but they are not still forthcoming. So if there are documents out there that I don't have, the only thing I can do is to write and request for them. And that I have done. So far, I haven't got anything yet. But these documents, I can remember, were provided. And possibly, if I go home, I will write again and make another request. If they will be made available to me. Is there a specific file? Because all the documents in your files, as far as we know, have been given to us. Is there a specific file that you would want to have access to? The file can be brought to the yeah. Commission so that you the, can go The specific through. file will be um, the file on TEL and the file on the Secretary General's office. You had specific files on TEL and on the Secretary General's office? Yes, please. Very well. Now. I thank you. We'll, we'll collect those documents because um, we, um, the authority, your authority to reroute the traffic in 2013 is one that you will be, be required to produce to this commission. I will just move on. You can note that. Yes, I, I want to note it. It is authority to work with MGI. In August 2013. To, to work with MGI and develop. In August 2013. Yes. And, and uh, to not only work, we wrote more or less, appoint them informally as um, international gateway managers. No, no, no. Um, I need to clarify this point, ma'am. Take taking over, like I said yesterday, is to develop a bypass. And this bypass means rerouting traffic from the traditional routing that is being used by the current service provider to that bypass. That is the rerouting now we are talking about. I understand. Okay. I think we understand. Okay. We have had various international gateway managers from Global to Oretus to system one, yes, you know, and there never was a situation where a temporary gateway manager was appointed. No, it's not about appointing a temporary gateway manager. I can even tell you with the process of even terminating MGI's contract, it could only happen with the use of a bypass. The same bypass was used originally when TEL was also taking over from um, System 1. A bypass is a procedure and it goes with a lot of reasons, which I mentioned here the other time. Because if you don't do it, you realize that even with TEL at the time, without the bypass, they were going to um, create a total blackout for the country. And this bypass has been made with records 
the traffic was being passed through this bypass to secure some of that national traffic. And gradually, the capacity on the bypass was being increased and more and more traffic was put on that bypass. Um, the challenge we have is not about the bypass. The challenge we have is that there was no legal relationship between GAMTEL and TEL or Gambia, uh, and MGI, or Gambia government and MGI, under which, under which umbrella one could ask them to create a bypass. What is expected, of course, is that you would negotiate a contract first before you take the steps of creating the bypass. That would be the usual route that one would expect you to follow. But however, you said you had authority yes, 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 to do this. So this is the authority we are talking about. Do yes, you understand? I, I'll continue to search, okay. but I, I can always say that, yes, there was this authority. Very well, very well. Yes, yes. Now, in terms of... <clears throat> The contract with MGI, you said you explained the circumstances under which you signed. Did you seek legal advice when you were given the contract, you said, by the president himself for you to sign? And uh, you said you went back to your office and then you signed. You were alone. You, nobody was there. At what point, uh, let me rephrase, did you seek legal advice at any point during this process? legal advice as with regards to what? The signing of the contract. No, um, I did not seek legal advice because the signing of the contract was a directive which I followed. I'll just show you a document um, which again was tendered in this, in this commission. It's part of Exhibit SC 67 and it's a document um, that was provided by Gamtel. It's a letter dated 25th April 2013. We would just like you to explain the circumstances of this document. Um, because in April 20, 25th April 2013, TEL was still in place. And uh, the contract with MGI was signed in 2014. Now, this is a letter from the Attorney General's Chambers addressed to the Managing Director, Gamsel, yes. and it's talking about an MGI Gamsel contract agreement. What is this one about? May you allow me some minutes to go through the document? What we'll do is um, we'll make you a copy so that you can, you can take it with you. Okay. Um, you should have been shown by the investigators. Okay, All right. um, thank you. Can you collect Exhibit SC67, the letter? Thank you. Um, can we... Now, MGI says um, in a report they submitted to the task force that was set up by government on the ICT sector and the international gateway that they um, executed various projects, projects under, the, under their management um, contract. Yes, ma'am. And you have mentioned one of them, which is the Gamsel billing. Yes, yes. ma'am. Yes. Um, they, they mentioned eight projects, and I'd like to show you the report, which is, again, part of Exhibit SC 67. And I'd like you to confirm. Page 10 of Exhibit SC67, MGI report to the task force. Okay. 
use that copy, yes, thank you. MGI has listed eight projects totaling $26,8,719, which they say um, they expended. They expended in, with regard to the execution of these projects. And the funds came from the International Gateway Proceeds. As Managing Director of, of Campbell, I would like you to confirm that these projects were indeed executed and um, funded through MGI okay, from uh, the proceeds of the International Gateway. We have IGW, which is International, I suppose, Gateway. Yes. Cost 3.6 million. Gamsel billing, 11.7 million. Old, I'm just rounding it up. E-government, 950,000. DPI, 3,758,000. Fraud Prevention and Detection, 956,000. INMC, 2,256,000. ICT, 1.6 million odd. And Roaming, 1.09 million, totaling 26 million. Okay, out of the total of these eight projects, there is one that I could not confirm and that is the e-government, the 950. The IGW is the international gateway itself where they were the ones who procured and deployed the gateway switches. Sorry, sorry let's just be clear about the one you cannot confirm. Yes. The e-government, 950,000, yes. you cannot confirm it. Why? Why can't you confirm it? No, because um, I don't think I have any relationship to this e-government um, um, expenses from MGI. Wasn't an um, e-government extension project for the Office of the President one of the contracts that was executed? Yes, I saw in the correspondences that the second phase of that project was funded by MGI, but I have not been involved in um, neither the, um, the payment nor the arrangement for MGI to, to fund it. Which correspondence did you see which indicated that this was being funded by MGI? No, I'm talking about any correspondences with regards to MGI funding this. That's what I mean. I thought you said you saw correspondence. No. I what said I have not been involved in any correspondences with regards to MGI funding this project. How were these projects? Well, you have confirmed seven out of eight. Yes. What was the process in, uh, of approving uh, projects? Because this is a commitment, $26 million. Even if you remove the $950, you are $950,000, you still have about 25 point, Yes. Um, uh, over $25 million. So what was the process for approving projects on the, with MGI? Now, um, I made mention of um, the directive that was given to MGI to support Gamtel Gamsel. First of all, to start with the IGW, that was um, a prerequisite for them to buy switches and replace the, the ones that were not usable because when Tel left, they could not access Tel switches. So as a result, they had to buy their own switches, and that is the IGW. The Gamsel billing. No, so so no. Let's take it one at a time. They had to buy switches. Yes, these and are the gateway switches that they used to be able to um, manage traffic. 
And these are the same switches referred to in this service contract that I showed you. Well, I, I, as I said, I will look into that. So I just want I'm you to confirm. I just want you, you yes, you had said you look into that and yeah, we will I'm give you time. Yeah, I'm expecting that I'll get a copy and I'll be able to look at it properly, if you allow me, sir, ma. Um, we, certainly you have, you'll have time to look at it. What I want you to confirm, looking at the switches that were listed in that service contract, I want you to be, confirm whether these are the same service switches that were used for the International Gateway and referred to as a project. Yeah, in, in my next presentation, I'll be able to confirm that to you. Very well. Um, these monies were paid, were deducted from the gateway proceeds. Um, I just want to understand, what was MGI's contribution to this contract? What was their contribution? Their uh, investors, they expected to bring their own money and invest. You said the, the president had um, um, given them a directive to assist Gamtel and take it to another level. I think that is what you said. Yes. So what was their investment if all this, whatever we have seen, is money they have taken from gateway proceeds to invest in at least the list they, they said, the list of projects they said they have invested in? So I'm trying to understand what their contribution was. Okay. Um, if you look at the process in which the, some of these contracts were conceived, um, they are supposed to be in different categories. Some of them are a prerequisite to the gateway management. The orders were directives to support us, and all what we were involved in is to identify to them areas that we needed support, knowing that the commitment in financial terms was an arrangement between them and the president. So we had not been involved in that. We were only making sure that we get what we wanted in terms of either um, a technical deployment of a system or a support service. That is what we were, we were doing. Who in the office of the president was responsible for the financial side? No, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know, ma. You wouldn't know? No, because um, my involvement um, with regards to MGI and the management of the gateway, like I always said, is on technical matters. So how do you know it was an arrangement between them and the president? No, because I said it here the other day that they did a no, presentation. No, in terms of contracts, I mean, you said they would, it's an arrangement. You, you identified what the a project, I presume. Yeah, it's not you would identify a project, and then what? what? What I could say here is the Gamsel billing out of the lot. The Gamsel billing, which includes roaming, these are the two that I would say they have, according to the instructions, sub been supportive in providing that as a service for us. And in that, the financial aspect of it is what I assume they had already um, arranged that with the former president. Our interest was for them to deliver what we requested. All right, you, you want, um, you've gone to Gamsel billing. The IGW will come back on the service, uh, on the service contract, and you said you'll be able to answer more questions. Yes. But on the Gamsel billing, what was your role, you said? No, um, from the very beginning, knowing that the directive was given to support us, my role was to walk around and establish areas that are much more urgent and needed support. Gamsel, at the time, their main support, like I explained yesterday, was the lack of adequate billing of value-added services 
that we, we, they we were supposed to roll out. You have said so. What I want you to explain to us is the role of Gamtel in this project. It's a project they said cost 11.7, 11, dollars, and which we paid for through the gateway proceeds because it was deducted from the gateway proceeds. Now I want to understand your role as the MD Gamtel in this project. No, my role at the time was from, from time to time to go over the progress report that was being made in the project implementation. Was the project tendered? Yes. Was the project tendered? Yes, I was aware of the tendering because um, there is this report one time that captured the tendering. Who was identified uh, uh, um, during the tender process? Who and who executed this contract, the suppliers? Oh, um, it was an MGI-led arrangement in partnership with a team that was set up from Gamsel to work with MGI from the beginning of the generation, from the generation of the specifications for the platform that Gamsel desires up to the time it was deployed. The tender, the tender, Mr. Sanyang. Yeah, tender. Tell us tender about the tendering, yes. Tender process, yes. It also includes GAMSEL. Um, I'll just show you exhibit SC67, which is a, um, a procurement, um, I'll call it minutes of the procurement for the tendering of um, this GAMSEL billing project. Um, what we have in the report is con inconsistent with um, what we've been told in terms of the persons or the co company that actually executed the contract or supplied the, the equipment. We have in the reports that Redney, Redney are the contractors. What that report, which is on MGI letterhead, which is the tendering uh, appraisal process, indicates that AMDOC was um, the company that was recommended because they were more competitive, and it's obvious that they were, because they were they quoted for $8.2 million. I don't know whether you can shed some light on this. Light on what? Okay. The investigators showed you those documents, did they not? Yes, I was trying to understand what is in the document. I'm sorry when you were talking because... Yeah, but you were previously shown these documents. I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, ma'am. If you need time to look at the documents, I think we'll give you time. We don't want you to be blindsided sided in any way. But yes. just to explain that there was a tender process mm -hmm. at the, um, and um, AMDOC, as far as the process was concerned, came out on top. But we ended up paying $3 million more to a company called Redney. And we would like you to explain, if you can, to assist the Commission understand how this could have happened? Well, um, prior to going through the document, what I can understand is we were working in partnership with MGI, and MGI led the process from the time of preparing the RFQ all the way through the tender process up to the deployment because the expertise was with them to lead us in the whole process. So even with the tender, um, I would assume the final result came from them as a recommendation. Are you saying you were not consulted on the final result of the tender? Consulted? Uh, yes, you were the MD, we, um, uh, Mr. Sanya. The, the Gamtel was a subsidiary of Gamtel. Yes, ma'am. They are being managed, in, in fact, from Gamtel. You take Gamtel takes the decisions in relation, in relation or relating to Gamtel. 
in, yes, 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 in, in that some is how cases, it, it yes. works. Now, are you saying that you are not consulted? No, consultancy was a process, was a continuous process. Were all you the way. consulted? Consulted about what? This contract, Gamsel, the awarding of this contract to Redney instead of AMDOC. No, the consultation here is our input with regards to looking at the documents, but the final decision was made by um, MGI. Where are you consulted? MGI was committing 11.7 million. It's not their money. It's money from the gateway proceeds. No, I understand, but... Um, yes, where are you consulted that they would want to switch from the most competitive bidder to Redney? No, I was, I was not preview to the information with regards to AMDOCS as um, a final decision made by MGI at the time. It was a tender process. What I can say is they came back with a final decision of having Redney as the winner. And I would say Redney as the most responsive bidder. No, no Gamtel officer took part in this process? There is a team in Gamsel that was working with MGI in the whole process. Now. And the team did not come back to you to tell you that Gam AMNOC was the most competitive? No, I presume it will be an information with regards to the, the, the various um, uh, companies that were involved. But for the final decision, that was um, from MGI. Did any of these projects go to, um, to um, Gambia Public Procurement Authority for approval? No, this was not a Gamsel conceived project. This was, to me, a donation, a project to be donated to Gamtel. Donated? Yes. Where did you understand that the, the money was coming from? Well, I understand, you know, it is an agreement between MGI and the former president to provide us what we wanted, and any monies that were paid there were probably discussed within them. Our interest was to get um, the, the platform that we needed. The money was being donated by who? No, the donation, I mean, is not the money. I'm talking about um, the system itself was being donated well, by, by MGI? Provided by MGI. Maybe I can use that, that word. It was being provided by MGI in response and to the, the call of the former president. And the funds were coming from where? Where the, did you understand that the funds were coming from? Well, um, I think it is indicated in the contract. And the funds to come from, it's as a result of their presentation of these projects to the former president. Mr. Sanya. Yes, ma'am. You, you signed, not the office of the president. You, Mr. Sanya, signed all these agreements with MGI. And it was made clear that um, ex everything, expenses would be deducted from every money, in fact, that um, every expense would be deducted from the international gateway proceeds. There was never any misunderstanding about that. No, I understand that, yes, ma'am. Yes, so when we're talking about projects, um, I, I would suggest that we, we don't talk in terms of donations. We paid for this. No, I, I rectified that statement, uh, you know, as Very a donation. Well. I, I right. was meant to say it was um, 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 a project that formed part of the support that they were requested to render to us. The international gateway proceeds are public funds. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. And all public funds are subject to a bidding process, competitive process under the Gambia Public Procurement Authority. You're aware of that? Yes, I'm aware of that, ma'am. Now, which of these projects? Because we understand that the e-government, the DPI, the fraud prevention and detection, and INMC were all projects that were, in fact, um, executed by uh, um, Mobicel. 
the Gambian company? Uh, I'm not aware of that. All right. Um, you are not aware of it? The, that the list of all of these were executed by Mobisa. The ones I have mentioned, e-government, DPI, fraud prevention, INMC, um, and, uh, yes, and INMC, totaling over $5 million, were executed by Mobisa. No, I'm not aware of that. Possibly the e-government, sure, e e which was the second phase of the one that we funded, Yes, because it was Mobicell that started the project, and if there is any additional funding by MGI, um, it was Mobicell that continued to deploy the second part. The DPI. But the DPI. 3.7 million dollars. You are saying you are not aware that it was Mobicell no, that was the I was contractor? No, I was not aware. I was always believing that it's MGI. Fraud prevention and detection. Yeah, because all of these are part of the responsibilities of MGI. So you are also not aware that was executed, executed by Mobisel? No, no, ma. The INMC for $2.2 million? No, ma. I was not. But you were aware that these were projects that were executed as you started. Did any of these projects, apart from the Gamsel building, which went to international um, tendering process, the projects that I have mentioned, did any of them go to, through any tendering process? No, because um, the whole commercial aspect of acquisition of these equipment was not involving Gamtel. Our responsibility was to work with them and manage an already established platform at the technical level. Mr. Chairman, I don't have any further questions for Mr. Sanyang today. He'll be required to come back. We'll give you a date okay. on these projects. We will show you all the documents okay. of, um, that we have to give you an opportunity to address them. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. All right. We'll uh, rise and we'll be back on Thursday, 15th of February. The reason being we have to visit certain sites upriver, that is in the provinces. Thank you. <laughs>